Let's pray together. Our Father, on this Good Friday, we pray that you will show us your love. In Jesus' name, Amen. Good morning. I'm going to need some help. And so I'm going to ask all the children who want to, to come and sit up here, because I want to give you something, and I want to show you something. So come and have a sit up here. Okay. Good. Thanks. Okay. So I've got a question for us as we start. It's a question for all of us. And here's the question. What is love? When we find out what love is, as people show us love. So, question, who has shown you love at some point in your life? Can you think of someone? Someone in your family? Someone who's a friend? Someone here at church? Who's shown you love? Or when do you feel most loved? If you're little, maybe it's when you're cuddling up with your mum or your dad, maybe when you're on, on, on on their lap, having a hug, when you're lying back with them resting on the sofa, or when you're being cuddled in your bed. Maybe that's the time that you feel love. I'm going to show you a picture, and if you're up here, you'll be able to see it. Here's a picture of me when I was about your age having a cuddle. Can you see that? Anyone see that? Okay. Yeah. Can you see that? Okay. Now, if you're grown up, when do you feel most loved? Now, maybe it's exactly the same, all the things I've just been saying. But how about other times? Maybe when something bad happens in your life and when people gather around you and support you. And sometimes the people we love get poorly and sometimes they die. So imagine someone you love is going to die. And what makes a huge difference is that the people gather around you in love and they help you to prepare for that death. And they may stick with you after that person dies. That's love. Now in all Jesus' signs and his friendships and his teachings, which we've been reading in John's Gospel, Jesus shows love. And John's been preparing us to see the love of God as Jesus dies. Ben had a verse up on the slide earlier. John the Baptist, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And do you remember, we were having the, feet, the foot washing in the last few weeks, haven't we? That's when Jesus is showing God's love. And then Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you. And now we've come to, the, to this day, which we call Good Friday. It's the time of Passover. I don't know if you can remember the Passover, that the blood was put on the doorposts. as a festival where the people of God remember that God rescued the people from slavery. So Jerusalem is full of people. Jerusalem's full of people. And Jesus has been arrested. Okay, everyone's still tuning in? Jesus has been arrested and he's been condemned to die by crucifixion. He's preparing to die. And now he's walking up a hill. Look what he's carrying. He's carrying this, a cross like this. And as he walks up the hill, do you know what the soldiers who are with him are carrying? Have a look over here. Let's have a look. What are they carrying? They're carrying nails. That's right. Now I'm going to ask you guys to be very careful and to take one of these nails, which Shep's going to give you, and I want you to hold it in your hands like this in front of you. Okay? And if adults want some nails, there's plenty to go around. Okay? So Shep will help you to have one of these nails. So they've got nails and they've got a hammer. So hold it in front of you, just like this, in your fist, like this, yeah? Um, I've asked most parents about this. Um, (laughs) Any parents who are concerned? Forgive me. Okay, so they're getting to the top of the hill and the soldiers have got these nails. Hold them out in front of you, please. And the soldiers, they take the cross and they take the nails, like the ones you're holding, and they put the nails through Jesus into the wood. Then they take all Jesus' clothes 
And they share them out. And you know what? They play a game at that point. Jesus is crucified on the cross. And the soldiers play a game to see who will get the last piece of his clothes. So really bad things are happening to Jesus, right? Really bad things are happening. But don't miss what's going on here. Don't miss what's going on here. What's the name of today? Good Friday. So have a read. Have a read. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother. That's Mary. His mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. And from that time on, the disciple took her into his home. So why is this day Good Friday? Because here is love. As Jesus dies, we see Jesus' people loving him, and Jesus loving his people, and Jesus' people loving each other. Now, you might hear it said sometimes that Jesus was completely abandoned when he went to die, but that's not true. It's not true. He was abandoned by nearly every man. They were afraid. Perhaps they're afraid of being crucified with Jesus. Hold out your nails again. Okay. Can you feel the fear which you might have of being crucified with Jesus? Okay. We only hear about one man, John, the disciple Jesus loved, staying with him as he was dying. But as the verses say here, many women stay close to Jesus, loving him right to the end. So here is love. Jesus' people loving him. And Jesus is still loving his people. Did you see that? He's nailed to the cross. Hold out your nails. He's nailed to the cross. And he looks down from the cross and he sees his mother among the women. And then he sees John, John and Mary. These are Jesus' own people. His, his closest relative, his mum, and his closest friend, John. And Jesus loves them. And how does he love them? He loves them by forming a new community, a community of love. Now, do you remember, we said earlier, that when someone's dying, it's real love when people gather around that person and the people who love them and care for them. Well, as Jesus is dying, he's gathering a new community around him. He's making a new family of God. And he says to his mother, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. You see, John and Mary before, they were not family. They were not family. But now they're a family. Jesus is creating a new community of love from the cross. This is love. Here is love. And his people are to love each other. Do you remember Jesus said, love one another as I have loved you? Well, Jesus promises that as we love him, he will make his home with us. And then what happens with John and Mary? The disciple took her into his home. Jesus makes his home with us, and we have family with each other. So John and Mary did what Jesus has been talking about through the whole of the gospel. They loved each other. And that's what it means to follow Christ on Good Friday. Now, hold out your nails again, please. Hold out your nails again. Okay. And look up at the cross. Okay. So we're called to love each other as Christ has loved us. And we will only love like that as we look on Jesus loving us. So, it's a dark hour. It's a dark hour. Jesus is dying. But even the darkest hour can't put out the light of love. So, I want you to do something really important here, okay? I want you to stand up, children, please. Okay, and we're all going to stand and we're going to sing our, our, our song. Perhaps we have the musicians come back, please. Okay. Thank you. Hold on to your nails. I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Jesus dying in a moment. First, we're going to sing a song about love. And as we sing it, think about the love that God has for you, Peter. It's not where it goes, is it? Hold it in your hand. Thank you. Okay. So as Jesus was dying, he's gathered a people in love, and the question is, how can you show love today? So let's stand and sing 
uh, our next song. Okay, please, if you're standing, have a seat. Thank you. And we're going to find out a bit more about this love. So, keep a hold of your nails, okay? So we said that as Jesus is dying, here is love. As Jesus is dying, here is love. But now we're going to see that as Jesus dies, here is complete love. Here is complete love. So hold those nails in front of you again and focus on what we're talking about, yeah? Everyone got their nails? Good, okay. So Jesus is hanging on the cross and there's a sign over his head which says, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Now why do they call him a king? Where does the king sit normally? Where's the king sit? A throne, yeah, okay. So why do they call him a king? To make fun of him. What king would have a cross as his throne? But there's a real twist here, there's a twist. So you know how some book titles are really clever? I'm gonna show you a really clever book title, which you're gonna have a look at, okay? Here's a book title, which is very interesting. Can you see it? What's the book title? Can you read it? Arthur the Always King. Arthur the Always King. Why do you think he's the Always King? It makes you curious, doesn't it? The book title makes you think, hmm, what's that all about? And in the same way, Jesus has got a book title over his head. Okay? The book title, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. It makes you curious. What's it all about? Well, let's have a look. In the red, it says, the Lord is saving. The Lord is saving. That's the book title which is hanging over Jesus. And three times to hammer it home. As you know, the Romans did things in triplicate. It's written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The book title over Jesus dying is the Lord is saving. This is what complete love is all about. But how? What does it mean? How does the story end? Now Jesus cries out twice on the cross and we're going to listen to those two cries and see what, my, see what they might mean. Jesus says, first, I'm thirsty. Have you ever been thirsty? Yeah? When you really want a drink? Okay. Now Jesus is very very thirsty. Just recently, Jesus has been washing disciples' feet. He's had loads of water to do that, but now he hasn't got any water at all. His mouth is very dry. 
Some people offer him some wine vinegar to drink. That's not going to help. And then, as John and Mary look on, Jesus makes one more great cry. You ready for it? It is finished. He cries out. It is finished. Now, you know that feeling when you reach the last page of a book. Perhaps someone's reading you a story, or maybe you're listening to an audible, and you get, get, get right to the end of the book. You finish the book, you've got to the, the end of the book, and you go, I finished! I finished! Yeah? And it could be, it could be a, a long book like this, yeah? It could be a long book like this, or it could be quite a short book, like this one, one of my favourites. Okay? But you, you reach the end of the book, and you say, I finished! I finished. So Jesus has got a book title over his head, and the book title is, The Lord is Saving. The Lord Saves. And now he's coming to the last page of that book, and he's finishing the book. And what is that book? What, what's the book that he's finishing? It's his life story. His life story. And this is the final moment. It's what all the signs, all his teachings, all his love has been building up to. It's this. It's this. Everything in Jesus' Bible, which, he called, which we call the Old Testament, he just knew as his Bible, everything in John's Gospel has been leading up to this moment. And he shouts out, it is finished. What does it mean? Now let's hold our nails in our hands again, in front of you, okay? Because remember, those nails went through Jesus. As Jesus dies, he finishes saving us by his blood. His blood is enough to bring forgiveness for our sins. How? Well, it's very simple, but you've got to listen. So is everyone listening? Have these nails in front of us? Yeah? Okay. So each of us love the story to have a happy ending. A happy ending. We want, we want books to have happy endings. But because of our sins, we deserve to have our life taken from us. Our story should be finished and over, and we should have an unhappy ending. We should have an unhappy ending. But when Jesus died, his life was taken from him. He didn't deserve to die. He died in our place. And his blood, because of those nails, because of those nails, was poured out for us. Because of love, he had an unhappy ending. An unhappy ending. He took our unhappy ending for us. But because Jesus died for us, this is really important, you're listening, because Jesus died for us, we don't have to have an unhappy ending in our story. And in fact, we're going to have a happy ending. And you know what it's going to be written in? Our unhappy ending will be written in Jesus' blood. A blood which can never change and which is forever. Now, do you remember, Jesus was thirsty, right? He was thirsty a moment ago in the story. He hadn't, he hadn't got any water to drink. He shouted out, it's finished. He's died. And then look what happens. Look what happens next. He's going to rise again on Sunday. We're not quite there, there yet. Okay. We're going to stay on Friday. We've got to get through Friday. Thank you, though. You're quite right. He's, that's coming. Okay. Then what happens next? When they came to Jesus, they found that he was already dead. So they didn't break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers got a big spear and he pierced Jesus' side. And that brought, that, that brought a sudden flow of blood and water out of his side. This is complete love. Christ is definitely dead, he's truly dead, and his living blood, his living water is poured out for us. And why is it poured out? We had it earlier. Remember that song we were singing? He cleans us by his blood. That's amazing. There's a, a lovely song we sang earlier, on the Mount of Crucifixion, fountains open deep and wide, through the floodgates of God's mercy flowed a vast and gracious tide. There's another song I love. Listen to this one. Oh, precious is the flow 
that makes me white as snow. No other help I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus cleans us from sin. Have a look here. Do you remember? We painted these doorposts with blood. With red paint it was, but with blood. That was on the doorposts of the Israelites. And the angel of the Lord, the judgment of the Lord, passed over those houses and no one was hurt. In the same way, the blood of Jesus washes away our sin. God's judgment will pass over us. So hold out your nails. Hold out your nails. One last time, okay? If you invite God to make his home with you in love, you'll be delivered from judgment, from death, from guilt, from fear, from slavery, from sin, forever. Okay, so we're going to hold out our nails and we're going to do something together. Okay, so if you believe in Jesus, if you put your faith in Jesus, you're completely forgiven for your sins. And that means you can be free. So hold your nails out in front, right in front, okay, and then let them go. Okay, you're free. Don't pick them up again. Don't pick them up again. You don't want to go back to that, do you? No. Okay, so leave that behind you. So what is love? That's our question. Here is love. Here is love. Mary and John, a new community of love. And here is love. Jesus dying for our sins, for each of us. And we are invited now to love one another because of this great love that God has shown for us. So coming back to what you were saying, it is Good Friday. Jesus' mortal life is finished. Jesus' mortal life is over. It's finished. But you see, God's work through Jesus is not finished. God the Father and God the, God the Spirit, and they're not finished with God the Son. A new day is coming and a new body, a new life. And with a new life, a new book can be opened. A book of life. And your name and my name can be written in that book. Remember the happy ending? That's going to be written. Our names can be written in the book of life. So, if Friday's good, just wait for Sunday. But for now, that lies ahead. We stay with Good Friday. We go through Holy Saturday. We stay with that. And we wait for Sunday. We stay looking at Jesus' glory the glory he promised he would have when he died on the cross. So here is love, and here is complete love. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your immense and wonderful love. We thank you, Jesus, that you looked down on your mother and on your friend, and you made a new community of love. And we thank you, Jesus, that you finished all the work which you had to do in dying for us. And we thank you that your blood is enough for us. And we thank you that we can now be free. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So please leave your nails behind. Let's thank the children very much for their help. <laughs>